Plasma globes are a lot of fun on their own, and inside is a nice high frequency, high voltage AC power supply. Most of them can reach about 5000 volts open circuit, and they're very convenient and handy for doing high voltage experimentation. This one I got at Goodwill for the incredible price of $3, so not breaking the bank here, and it doesn't really have a brand name. If I wanted to use the power supply that's inside this unit for powering an experiment, I could just bring down the input voltage supplied to it. But at some point, if I wanted to start it out at its absolute minimum, the chip inside does need some constant voltage to stay locked into its frequency and to operate properly. So as I bring down the voltage on the input to a certain point, the chip will kick out. And that means when I slowly bring it up, it'll suddenly turn on at some percentage, let's say about 15% of its maximum output. And that's not really what we want. So I'm going to show you how to modify this board in order to get a full range sweep on the output while still providing the chip the necessary DC voltage it needs to operate. With the board taken out of the unit, we can see it's not an incredibly complicated board. Pretty straightforward. And for comparison, here's another board. Now we're going to see that all these boards have a few things in common. They have a power switching NPN transistor. They have a high frequency high voltage AC transformer. And they have a bridge rectifier, usually made of individual diodes, four of them. And in order to modify this circuit, we need to remove these rectifier diodes, but hang on to them because we'll need them later for this project. And we're going to need to cut a trace that feeds positive voltage from the input to the high frequency transformer. Taking a closer look at this board, we can see that on the underside, these two rectifiers right here are bridged together between these two pins, and these two rectifiers are bridged together between these two pins. If we take a look at where those go, we can see that the anode side, the line side, is connected together here, so we know this is going to be our positive input, and these two are connected with the cathode side, so we know this is going to be our negative input. Going back to the underside of the board, we can verify this. If we take a look at our positive here and trace that lead back, we can see that it goes here to a big filter capacitor. And the line side on the filter capacitor, electrolytic, is our negative, and we can see that our negative terminal here goes directly over to these other two rectifiers that are on the cathode side connected here. So this is how we can determine this entire rail here. This is our positive, and this entire rail here. All this is our negative. Let's go ahead and remove these rectifiers then. Three of the four. And now we can lift these up slightly and it'll be easy to pull them out. And now we need to install the jumpers, but first we've got to figure out which two are going to get jumpers and which two aren't. The power connector. The center pin is connected to the back side, which goes through the board and is connected here. So the center pin on power connectors is almost always positive. There are a few exceptions, but in this case, we're gonna wire it as if the center is positive. And so we know that this entire rail here is gonna become our new positive since we're not using an AC input as it came with. And so we're gonna take this connection here and bring it from our new positive input across to our positive rail. And then our negative comes back from the jacket and it follows this trace along to the switch 
which then follows when it's switched on this trace back to the other side of the previous bridge rectifier. So now this is gonna be our negative input switched rail and we need to connect that to our negative input rail. So we'll jump across there. So that's the top and the third down. So we need to put a jumper here on the top and the third down. All right, and with those two jumpers installed, now DC input will go directly to charging the main filter capacitor and the rest of the board. And since we have four of these diodes to work with, I'll just go ahead and add some reverse polarity input protection by using those other two pins. All right, and so we can see that the anode or the line side of the diode is facing towards that connected positive input. So if this is ever connected in reverse, this diode will effectively short out the input power supply, but it will protect the chip and the rest of the circuit. The last modification we need to do to this board is to disconnect the positive feed of this transformer. So the transformer is primary here is connected across these two outer pins. The center pin is the ground side. The other side of that wire is connected to, through the secondary coil, this wire. And what we wanna do is take the positive rail coming directly from our main filter capacitor and we want to disconnect it from the positive input of the transformer. And the easiest way to do that is just by putting a slice directly across this board here. And I'll do that with the Dremel tool in just a second and come right back. So there's our cut. I moved it up a little bit. We can see it's all the way through. And I moved it up in case I wanted to drill some wires down from the top so that I could connect to this pad and that pad. But to make it easy, we don't have to drill holes. We can just go ahead and scrape away a little bit of this pad near the edge here so that we can make ourselves a nice, easy solder input point. You could just obviously connect right to there too, but. Now the way that we've modified it, whenever the switch is turned on, the chip and everything else on the board will get DC power from the input, but the transformer won't. So we need to feed the transformer now from an external DC voltage source. And we can do that by taking power from our already available DC input and using a buck module. Now this DC to DC buck converter I modified in the previous video, which I have linked down below. And we're gonna wire this in so that we can control our DC voltage going to the transformer. If I wanted to do this clean, I'd drill a couple of holes through parts of the board where there are no traces and then I'd bring the wires in from the top, but it doesn't really matter that much. So what I'll go ahead and do now is connect that into the circuit. So the top here is positive. And that bottom side, that's our negative. Now all we have to do is connect the positive input wire. So that's all wired up and it's ready to give a try. Now there's one more thing left to do, which we'll get to in just a moment, but we have this module hooked up and powered 
and again we have the scope probe close and if we just flip the power on now we see that as soon as power comes on we do have some voltage even though the potentiometer is turned all the way down and that's because this board can output a minimum of 1.2 volts can't go below that so the transformer is still getting 1.2 volts this is why we needed to save those diodes if i turn up the power we can see that we get a nice even rise there is no jumping it's real stable but let's take it back to the bench and add those diodes and then we'll get complete voltage control so we'll just disconnect the positive output of the buck converter and i've taken two of those diodes that we pulled off the board and wired them in series The voltage drop across each of these diodes is about 0.65 volts and that'll get us pretty close to having a zero voltage output when we first flip this on. There we go. And now we just got to connect that same wire to the output of that series diode chain. And there's one final thing that I'd like to add to the circuit because in this case, I actually care about keeping the frequency more stable and without the capacitor to push against because these diodes will isolate back EMF from this transformer and prevent it from getting to this capacitor. In this case, I actually want to add another capacitor across the positive output past these diodes and the ground of the transformer. And so to do that, I'll just use a 16 volt, 470 microfarad capacitor. Uh, anything, you know, basically around a thousand microfarads down to maybe 350 microfarads minimum would probably work for this at, of course, above 16 volts. So this is the ground and this is the positive input. That looks like a pretty good spot right there. and then the capacitor can go right in. We want the negative side facing towards that ground rail there. And then this is a recycled capacitor, so the leads are not quite long enough. So we'll have to extend those slightly. There we go. Leads are extended, buck converter is connected again, and that should be everything. So let's give it a try and see what we are looking at now. All right, let's see what we've won. The board is connected again to the power supply, and it's actually turned on right now, but you'll notice we don't see any trace on the scope. The probe is positioned close to the transformer as it was last time, and now we'll just begin to slowly bring up the voltage from the buck converter. And now as I continue to turn that potentiometer, we get a nice smooth rise all the way up to full amplitude. And so at full, we're at 27.8 kilohertz as we ramp down. Already we're at 28.2, 28.3, 4, 5. And here we go, we are hitting 29 kilohertz. And at the minimum, we're about 30 kilohertz. So in this case, our frequency is actually going up slightly as we decrease the voltage, which is the opposite behavior when we just varied the DC voltage input to the whole entire board before we modified it. And as we can see, we do have a really nice smooth transition. There's no jumps and it's incredibly sensitive at the low levels, which means we can start up with virtually no voltage. If I were planning on using this unit to drive a thruster, for example, I might want to add some kind of throttle indicator. So I have a 
10 segment dot bar display. It's a little kit board and it's wired DC input directly to the leads of that capacitor that we installed. and applied to the same plasma globe we pulled it out of. Now we have control over the streamer length. I know this video was a bit long, but in case your board was different than this one, I cover the basics of how to trace back and determine where you need to make your modifications. And overall, the project turned out pretty well. So to the person who had originally asked me about how to control one of these high frequency AC plasma globe drivers, I hope this has been thoroughly explanatory and answered all of your questions. Until next time, y'all take it easy.